Today, we're going to make a planisphere. Planispheres come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. You can buy them online, plastic ones, big ones, small ones. We're going to be making a paper one. All these different shapes, they come in different names as well. This is a star guide. This is a star board. This one's called a star wheel. But they're still all planispheres. A planisphere is just a map that you can adjust to whatever date and time that you're going outside to look at the stars. Now I can already hear some of you thinking, why would I want this? I have an app for this on my phone. So do I. But I find that the planisphere makes it easier for me to find a constellation if I want to go and look for that constellation. Whereas if I just want to look up at the sky and see what's up there, I use my app. That's easier because I can move it around and it'll show me exactly what I'm looking at. But if I want to go seek something out, seek out a certain star or a certain constellation, it's easier to take the planisphere and find it on there first. And then I can use the planisphere to find the landmarks in the sky. So let's get started making it. To start, click the link in the description of this video and there you can print out the two sheets of paper that you need to make your planisphere. It works better if you print it on heavy paper or something like cardstock that's, that's pretty thick. Otherwise, the only things you need are a pair of scissors and some tape. Once you've printed out your pages, it's time to start cutting. Some of our younger viewers may want to get help from an older family member for this. Start with the star map. That's the page that has the pictures of the stars and constellations on it. You want to cut around the calendar part. Cut it neatly, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the better you cut it, the easier it will be to use. So set the star wheel aside and let's cut out the frame or the holder. Start on the edge of the paper where the heavy black line comes to the edge and cut along that curved line that has all the times printed along it. Make sure you leave the times attached, that part you wanna keep. Cut all the way around that curved line all the way down to that diagonal line and then straight back off the edge of the page on the other side. Now the tricky part. We got to cut out that oval. Fold the paper in half and then pinch right in the center of the oval. Make a slash with your scissors so you can get to the line and cut right along that line. As neat as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect, but the neater the better. Cut all the way around so that you're left with an oval shaped hole kind of in the middle of the paper. That's actually what you want. It's called the viewing window, and that's where you're going to be able to see the star map. Now let's put it together. Start by folding it along the dashed lines. First, the dashed line under the southern horizon. Fold the paper nice and straight, and then press down on your fold to get a good stiff crease. Next, we fold the sides. Again, right along the dashed lines, nice and straight. And since this is now two sheets thick, you really got to push down hard on it to get a good stiff crease. Now get your tape and take a little piece of tape and hold down each one of those sides. You've made a little pocket. Take your star wheel, your star map, and slide it inside of that pocket so that you can see the stars and constellations in that oval that you cut out. This is a planisphere. Now let's figure out how to use it. Using a planisphere is super easy. All you got to do is find the date that you're looking at the sky on the star wheel. Then turn the star wheel until that date lines up with the time that you're going to go outside and look at the sky. In this case, we set it for January 25th at 7 p.m. Then, if you're looking to the south, hold the planisphere so that the southern horizon is towards you and what you see in the oval is what you'll see in the sky. Let's go into a little more detail. I've reset the planisphere to February 15th at 7 p.m. Now that viewing window is showing you what the sky would look like if you were to lay on the ground on your back and just look up. That's not a very good way to look at the sky. The ground is cold this time of year. I really don't recommend it. So instead, let's look at how we can break up the viewing window for different directions. Imagine drawing a line straight across, I don't do this for real, but imagine a line going from the eastern horizon to the western horizon, and then another line from northern horizon to southern horizon. 
The point where those two imaginary lines cross is called the zenith. That's the point straight up over your head. Now, if you hold the planisphere so that the southern horizon is towards you, and you look to the south, you'll see everything below the zenith, or everything in the half of the viewing window that's closer to you from that horizontal line. The same is true if you look to the north, or to either the east or the west. We're going to be looking to the southern sky for this, but how do you know which way is south? Well, that's pretty easy too. Go outside right before sunset and watch where the sun sets. Don't look at the sun, just watch where it sets. It sets in the west. So in order to face south, stand so that your right shoulder is pointing to where the sun set. And if you look straight ahead, you'll be looking to the south. All right, now while we wait for it to get dark, let's look at the planisphere and pick something to try to find. Let's pick a bright star because they're easier to find. On the star map, the bright stars are big and the dim stars are really tiny. It looks like at seven o'clock tonight, almost straight up overhead, there's gonna be a really bright star in the constellation Auriga. Let's go outside and see if we see it. We wanna to look to the south and then we wanna look almost straight up and there it is. That's the star Capella, again, in the constellation Auriga right where the planisphere says it should be. Okay, let's find something else. Another easy one to start. How about Orion's belt? If we look at the planisphere, the planisphere says that it should be about halfway up in the sky and just a little bit to the left of south. So let's go back outside. We'll put our right shoulder, shoulder towards sunset so that we're looking to the south. And then we're gonna go up about halfway up and just a little left and there it is, Orion's belt, part of the whole constellation of Orion. Super easy to find. Now that we can find Orion, we can use it and the planisphere to find other things, like Sirius, the brightest star in our night sky. If you look at the planisphere and we imagine Orion's belt as a line, well, if we extend that line of Orion's belt to the left, it points straight at a really bright star in Canis Major. That is the star Sirius, the brightest star in the northern hemisphere night sky. Let's see if this works in the real sky. Again, let's go out. We'll face south. We have our right shoulder towards sunset. Let's find Orion's belt. Follow it to the left. Sure enough, there's Sirius right where it's supposed to be. Now that we found Orion and Sirius, we can use them to find Mars. This one isn't on your planisphere, though. And I'm going to take us inside the planetarium because the lines work better with the curved ceiling. They work the way they do in the real sky. Just imagine a line from Sirius to Rigel, the bright blue star right under Orion's belt. If you take that line from Sirius to Rigel and then keep going straight, the next bright thing you get to should be a reddish color, and that's Mars. So now I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Take your planisphere outside and see if you can find the stars Betelgeuse, Procyon, and Aldebaran. They're not labeled on the planisphere, but they're on the screen now. If you find them, tell your teacher you want to email the planetarium guy and let me know. I can't wait to hear from you. Thanks for watching.